translate those dreams they went to Guwahati under a new head coach in 2015 and tonight in 2019 they're under a new head coach again they're back here that night they were 2-0 winners against Nepal they're looking to do something similar against Oman as I welcome Paul Maysfield in the commentary box I had a big big game today really really big game in the context of this group these two sides will be the ones you would think that would be slugging it out to finish second in the group Qatar clearly the favorites in group B so a big performance needed from the Blue Tigers today and that's the kind of urgency you'll expect from the team in red the Reds as they're called, the Omani national team and India will have a task at hand today. In front of their home fans though, so they'll be expected to be buoyed by them. Expected to be a full house here in Guwahati as well in the northeastern part of India. And 87th in the world compared to the 103rd, 103rd rank of uh, Team India. Good ball forward but possibly asking a little too much of uh, Ashik Karunian but that's the kind of pace the youngster has. Dealt with a little awkwardly though, but eventually well enough. Alma Salami there, his body shape was all over the place, but just managed to get it away. Bright start from India. Right indeed, here's another opportunity, and just about intercepted in time before Anirul Thapa could get anywhere near it. Cross coming in from Rahul Peke, intercepted once again. Hands behind the back at the moment. Brandon chasing it down from in, for in, from India's point of view. Right on the ball for Oman. Splitting out wide the two centre halves. Middle of defence, Al Musalam and Al Gailani. Pressing high, India. That's what they'd want to do as well. This is something that they were guilty of not doing enough in the Hero Intercontinental Cup as well. Good ball forward. Diving challenge coming in, but the ball had gone out of play as well. It's already offside. That was a close one. I think that was a very, very close one. Just showing that our man can hit on the counter-attack. There, it's that decision. That first one, it's not the reverse ball. Correct decision from the linesman. But... You've just got to be careful there because you've got to track your runners. You can't let them run in behind there. Sandish then had to come all the way out and it takes him away from a striker that could prove a big, big threat. A good pace there. Al he was on his bike straight away. Something they'll have to be wary of. Rahul Beke likes bombing forward as a wing back. Sheik looking for options on the left, finds Brandon. Harper finds Udanta on the right-hand side. Watch out for his pace and his fearlessness and wins a corner for India, the first of the game for the side in blue. Listen, you can see straight away, Stimac said, didn't he, after the Intercontinental Club, he knows what he's got to do, and that's to mix up the football and not play out all the time. It was epitomised there with that long ball forwards from Gurpreet, they've won that second ball. That's the key to India doing well in this game, picking up that second ball. And then Udanta wins a corner and a chance now to throw the big boys forwards and try and get on the end of something. And as always, under Igor Stimats, the strategy has always been for Anirudh Thapa, the number seven, to deliver it. And the big boys arriving. Adil Khan will be there. Sunday's Jingan, who incidentally is their joint second top goal scorer to deliver it. But the delivery wasn't good enough. Delivery was awful. Let's be honest, you've got to at least miss that first man. I don't know how many times we say that in the commentary box, Anand, but it's criminal because you saw there, a man can turn defence into attack very quickly. We saw that a few moments ago as well. The two centre-halves for India, Sandeep Jingan and Adil Khan. Number five and six. More similarities than that, of course. You recognise them with the facial hair and... The man one. Uh, I, I thought you weren't going to say it then, Anand. It was the big man in goal. Good beat Singh Sandhu. Yet to keep a clean sheet this year, of course. Good run here from Ashik Kurunian. Cross coming in. Who's reaching it? Udanta Singh Kumam. Sunil Chetri waiting at the penalty spot. 
Well intercepted once again. Fedantra just looked up a fraction earlier. Sunnala just burst into the six-yard box, unmarked there. It was really, really good play again. Actually, well, he's setting the place on fire at the moment, isn't he? Lovely little turn, gets it out of his feet. What's the run from Sunil in the middle? Look, Adanta puts his... He doesn't look up. If he just controls that and delivers it straight to the six-yard box, Sunil's got a five-yard tap-in, and India are 1-0 up. That's a, that's a half chance, half an opportunity there, but it's good from India the way they've started this game. Yeah, it's the pace, it's the urgency, it's the desire shown straight away. Sometimes that's what... That's what India can do. This is a very different side. It's a more battle-hardened side. The four years have done that to them. More conditionally aware as well, Mace. They can counter their lack of skill against superior opposition sometimes with that, the perseverance and the patience and passion sometimes. Yeah, but they're it's missing. They're getting better day by day. They really, really are. Because Stimak said to me before, they're learning all the time. He said, and they're like sponges. The players are like sponges, they just want to absorb all the information and the knowledge, and it is helping them. As far as Oman is uh, concerned, of course, what's helped them is that uh, camp in Germany. Cross coming in as well, dangerous looking as well. Good from Sandy that If you're in doubt, you deal with the ball, that's exactly what he did. Yeah, the long strides of Ashik Karunian, but stopped it, stopped shot very quickly as well by Al Ghailani, who was. Uh, was well in front near the halfway line. Al Mandar back towards his left back, Al Busaidi. You'll see him bombing forward every now and then. You'll see the wing backs come into play for Oman. Looks as though Raid and Al Mandar have switched wings already because Al Mandar's on this left hand side, more renowned as a right winger. So maybe he's looking to go from out to in, cut inside and get shots off. But it doesn't make sense because yesterday when they were training here, they were doing a lot of work delivering balls into the box and getting the crosses in. Better passing this, uh, Roland Borges uh, towards Ashik Karunian, switching nicely with Sunil Chetri who passes it uh, back towards a player in blue. The long strides of Ashik, the mind went faster than the legs. Well, as we mentioned, he hasn't really played for six months, has he? This is it again. I tell you, I wouldn't say anything against Sandish there because if you're a defender and you can deal with the ball and you're not sure, you deal with the ball. Keeper may get a little knock, but you've got to turn around and say, unless you're coming and you're calling, I'm going to deal with the ball. So, a little bit more communication there in the back line needed. The ball just floated uh, towards the 18 yard box, more in hope than anything else. Eventually, Oman have the ball back. We we'll hope to see more of that. Because in the first eight minutes, India have attacked them. Much the way they started their Asian Cup uh, campaign as well against Thailand. Completely surprised the opposition. Much the way they started the game against UAE as well. You'd remember that, Maze. You were commentating on that game. Yeah, a lot more in the face. Pushing up, squeezing on, just denying space. That's what they're doing here as well. They've looked the better side in the opening eight and a half minutes so far. They've looked lively, they're passing it well, they're mixing it up. Not everything's short, not everything's long. And it's just posing a question or two here to this Omani side. They're also trying to find their best combination, this Omani side. Good ball forward. Well dealt with as well. And a strong hand, or should we say a hand strong enough from Gurpreet just to parry it in the air first and then to collect it safely. Good ball though. This one here is a great ball, and it's a nice little touch just with the stomach there from Abdulaziz. We highlighted him before the game, knows where the back of the net is, and, well, you could see there, wasn't a million miles away. A little bit too close to Gurpreet, but just Adol maybe needed to be a little bit closer. Plays his football in Qatar, the number nine, Abdulaziz, scored twice in that 3-0 uh, win for Oman against India in World Cup qualifying. The last time these two sides met, in similar circumstances as they have met each other four times in World Cup qualifying or should we say twice but in four games absolutely right about the about the switch between Raid and Al Mandar number 15 and number six there he is on the ball plays his football in Malta 
good piece of skill that eventually finds a player in the same shirt as well well dealt with by Roland Borges had to be careful there because a slip here and there or a missed tackle and that could have been trouble well, like it should have been a free kick in favor of India been given as a throw in in favor of Oman that's why Ashik didn't look very happy There's the first one, there's a little tug. That was a free kick earlier, though. The, the, the arm went round, there was the hand pulling. Don't shake your head with me, Anand. There was contact. You know it as well. Well, the crowd certainly felt it as well on the other side, and you can see plenty of banners. There's a nice little banner unfurled on that side as well. The ultras, they're calling themselves. Blue, the revolutionary, you can see that just uh, in the background, the tricolor, sandwiched in the middle. It's never sandwiched in the middle, it's proudly displayed. Correct. It's great to see people still coming into the stadium. It's a good combination, this building up between Ride and Saad. On the right-hand side for Oman, the header. It's all in front though, Anand. They're not getting in behind at the moment. Sedi with a cross. Looping cross which is dealt with comfortably by uh, Gurpreet. A six foot six inch frame. Yeah, you may say a man will have the lion's share trying to pass it around, but where are they going? Nowhere. They're not breaking the lines of India. Challenge ball floated by Anirudh Thapa. But the keeper read it uh, and anticipated it beautifully as well. He saw what Anirudh Thapa was trying to do about a second earlier. Fires didn't need to do that, you know. I thought that Al Salami had that under control. Great challenge to win it back. Anirudh Thapa just seeing Sunil. It's a diagonal ball on a diagonal run, which is always difficult. But Sunil again just looking to try and nip him behind. Once again, chip towards Udanta. Controller, but Udanta is not very happy with the challenge that followed that. I he probably should be more disappointed with the fact that he couldn't control it. Yeah, I think it was an accident, really. You can see there, I mean, he was jumping in the air there. Al Manda, it's one of those things. Can be uh, a little bit painful, though, on the ankle. I think he'd be relatively happy the way that his side started today. Not him. Well, I think that. The respective faces uh, tell their respective stories as well. Igor Stimac looks looks the more relaxed, and uh, Irvin Kuman certainly has got uh, a, word, a few words to say to his players. Challenge from Thapa, not he won. No foul given there. He did just catch him though, if we're being honest. Interesting journey, of course, for uh, Irvin Kuman, coach of uh, Oman took over from fellow Dutchman uh, Pim Verbeek in February 2019. Decided personal reasons to quit after leading Oman for the first time in the knockout stage of 2019. A historic moment for them, so it was, it was surprising, of course, he cited personal reasons for it. And it was that five-month gap between the Air Marine Cup that they won, beating Afghanistan and Singapore on penalties, and the game against Yemen that they last played. Yeah, but you've got to turn around and say, when it was the AFC Cup, they went through as one of the third best, best place finishes. I mean, they only just eclipsed India. I mean, India won their opening game as well, didn't they? So they were slightly unlucky not to advance through to the knockout phase. So I don't think they set the world alight in January, if I'm being honest. I watched them, they were compact. We've seen that already. But they weren't expansive like they should be. Absolutely not. They lost their first game to Uzbekistan and then narrowly lost out to Japan, but it was a J Japanese side that was just looking to force a result. I did that game. I remember I did that game with John Helm as well as the uh, the round of 16 against Iran. They just organised, they were very disciplined, and that's what they do, they, they're they difficult to break down. Sometimes, I feel the teams can be flattered by their own success. Here's a bit of a mistake, though, from the goalkeeper, and this could be trouble for Oman. Udanta from Chetri, the goal, the goal provider, oh! almost turns goal scorer there. Hits the crossbar, still a chance for India. 
Well, this was the story of their campaign in the Asian Cup as well. Crossbars after crossbars. But no goals to show for their efforts after the, the delightful display against Thailand. Will it be a similar story? What a chance that was. What a chance. I thought Sunil was just going to spin and hit that first time because the keeper was well out of place. Good first touch from Adanta, but then he seemed to get it stuck under his feet. Did ever so well to create that angle, though. Just moved the ball with two quick touches. Beat the keeper, fire his hands down, but just couldn't beat the crossbar. Is it going to be one of those nights when these chances and opportunities come along? India have to take them. Absolutely shades of UAE once again. You saw this time and time again from the Blue Tigers when they played the UAE and of course then later on Bahrain as well, particularly in the first half in Sharjah. Well, hopefully they would have learned from their mistakes and Udanta was there, he's there tonight as well. Right, what do Oman have up their sleeves? They've got to regroup. Just got to remind India why they've come to India as favourites to finish uh, second in this group that also boasts the likes of Afghanistan and Bangladesh. Let's not forget that India are missing Amajit, they're missing Pranoy Halda. There's two straight away. Anas hasn't played for a very long time after announcing his retirement, so there's another one that could come into the starting lineup. There are a few injuries that India do have that, that could help this squad moving forwards. He was beaten hands down though, wasn't he? I mean, it's an awful kick. Great ball play throw. You see, I thought Sonner was just going to spin and hit that. How many times have we seen him do that in the past? But he puts it on a plate for Adanta, who did well in the end to create that half yard for himself, himself, but just couldn't bury it and find that top corner. That's just the aspect of the game that Vedanta would just love to change a little bit in the brand new season of uh, Indian football, of course. And as the World Cup qualifying and the Asian Cup qualifying goes along from the Blue Tigers' perspective, is the return of just a solitary goal doesn't quite do justice to the talent and the promise that Rudanta has uh, shown for the longest time now. But he's still young, I mean, he's still young, that's the thing. Got pace to burn, causes all sorts of problems and issues. We heard an interview, didn't we, with Kuman before the game, and he said, we know that their wingers are quick and they're skillful and tricky and can cause all sorts of problems. And to be fair, Ashik has as well today, and Sunil. Those two have been changing places as centre-forward and the man in the hole extremely well today. And you don't really notice it, but they're doing it very, very well. Ball forward onside as well. The keeper will have to do well over here. Ball still looping around. Tini Chetri is in there as well. But Oman clear their lines. Whipped in once again. And it needed a header like that to clear. And that header could have actually gone anywhere. It what, needed the precision. What a stunning ball that was from Brandon. It's about an inch too short. India really have got Oman on the ropes. It's a lovely ball clipped over the top. As he gets there, the keeper, well, he likes to come off his line. Good communication there for Oman as they deal with that. But how about that? He's fizzed that across and a most important timely header from Al Musalaimi just to flick it to safety. India on the front foot. Papa taking the second corner for India. Adil Khan almost. Sunday Chingan with the header. He's got to score. And he has to score. You have a look, he's in front of his man. And he's done ever so well to get there. But he's just jumped a fraction too early. Just missed time the header. 
But for me, as a centre-back, if you want to score your goals, those are the ones you've got to bury, where you're in front of your man that's marking you. That's another chance to India. But that was the similarity I was talking about between the two centre-halves, Sandeep Jingan with the header. He's got more goals than Udanta. And up back by Ashik. Good ball forward once again and almost reaches Chetri. Desperate defending this at the moment. Almost Salam on the ground. Header from Udanta. But before that, the defender reaching just on time. PK whips in across as well. Headed away by the Omani defence. India all over Oman at the moment. And they'll have to be wary here. Over counter. You can see Adil Khan tracking back with some purpose straight away. A chance for the opposition. And a corner for Oman on the other side. And they'll breathe a huge sigh of relief with that. That's the best passage of play that our man have just had in the whole of this game so far. Lovely ball again just clipped down the line. And Ashi, well, I mean, well, the defender's got to buy a ticket to get back in the ground there. And just tries to whip it into that near post area. Well defended from our man, but as we saw there, they turned defence into attack very quickly. And Abdulaziz is not to be taken lightly, by the way. Salah was trying to whip it across there. Ray took it short for Oman. In the middle of the park now. Trying to push more bodies forward now. The Reds. that will not reach a player in the same shirt and Sunday Singh is still probably thinking about that opportunity that could have been or should we say should have been 1-0 India look he's got in front of his man and this is why sometimes you don't have to win the headers you just got to try and put him off you can see just that little arm from Al Majeri just going into the back of Sandish but he's already jumped just that fraction too early but for me as a defender he's got to bury that he has to get over the top of that and bang Put it in the back of the net. Mixing it up again. Not long all the time. So, Igor Stimac has instilled that in his team. And the players have listened and learnt as well. And it's good to see them buying into that philosophy as well. And that's something that Romana are trying to do as well. They're trying to buy into the philosophy that Irvin Koeman is, is trying with them. And like we said, that five-month gap that they had has hurt their cause a little bit, Ashik is on the turf. The referee will show a yellow card. Al-Ghelani is uh, pleading his case over here. He's saying that was just his first challenge, but uh, he'll have to just go back to his mark because the referee is not going to listen to him. The Iranian referee, Mood Bonyadifur, issuing his first yellow card of the game. I think he's got the ball there, I think he's a little bit hardly done by, if I'm being completely honest. But again, it's just the pace of Ashik that's taken him away, and he's got him behind. Al Ghulaini, of course, the Arab names, they do have many, many names. That's what he has on the back of his shirt, or that's what he wants to be known as, which we've been informed of, Anand. And you can already see they're warming up substitutes already, old man, because they're not happy, Koeman's, with the way that his side are performing this first half. But in all of this space, a very interesting position for India to get a free kick. Got to make it count, no one. And when these chances and opportunities come along, they've got to make one count. They've got a man at the edge of the box as well, just outside the box in Anirudh Thapa, hovering around. We've also got a man free in Ashik Kurunian. Sunil Chetri! The Mr. India scores once again! He never fails to live up to the promise! Well, what can you say when Sunil Chaitri scores his 72nd for his country? There's not much you can. You just stand up, applaud and say thank you if you're an Indian football fan. How embarrassing is that defending? This is a set play and Sunil has only bent his run by about five yards just to get himself free. Look! No one's gone with him. But when it comes to him, the ball's only going to end up in one place, right in the back of the net. Awful defending, but a wonderful finish and very well-worked goal from India.
And those non-believers and the doubters out there who thought that this Indian side was going to fall apart after the Intercontinental Cup and the way that it went, well, I hope that they're looking at themselves here thinking, well, this is a new dawn and a new era. Because India, I've not seen India play like this for a long, long time, Anand. Not at this level, not with the accuracy and the way that they're playing now. Well, he just run out of adjectives sometimes to describe the man, but that's what he means for India, that's what he means for Indian football. He's an icon, not just in Indian football, of course, in, in Asian football. And that is just the reason why. But, of course, all set up with that free kick in that position, but it's not over just yet because Oman will be bruised and they will come back at India and they'll come back hard. And now the challenge begins for the Blue Tigers. He's closing down on Ronaldo now as well, isn't he? Another international goal for Sonil Chetri. We know that he's second in the current goal scorers that are still currently playing for their national teams. There's that little incident there with Anarud Tapa. Is it Tapa? It looks as though he's gone down just clutching his back, but... Like you say, Anna, what can we say? Every time we seem to do a commentary, he seems to score. And they're important goals. Remember at the Sri Kantareva, when they managed to qualify for the AFC Cup. This one could prove absolutely pivotal in qualification to get through to that next stage of the World Cup. It really, really could. You're looking at around 16, 17 points to finish second in the group. If Qatar, which are the runaway favourites in this group, the way that they are, and this would be the dream start for the Blue Tigers and them people out there, the Blue Pilgrims, who are backing the national team the way they are. That was Brandon, I thought it was Anaru Tapa, but I'll tell you something, Brandon's tracking back in and doing his shift as well today, so is Adanta. Good options on the bench as well, and that's that's something they'll take a lot of heart from. Of course, Amarjeet's injury caused all sorts of problems to their plans, but they've got Sahal on the bench, they've got a goal scorer in the form of Balwan Singh, Suddenly, things look a lot better when you're 1-0 up, but let's not forget, India were 1-0 up against uh, Tajikistan in the first game of the Hero Intercontinental Cup. They were 2-0 up, in fact, going into half-time, and then they conceded four, and that's the learning from a tournament like that. That's why they play tournaments like that. Let's not forget that that was very early in the tenure of match, where the players hadn't understood and picked up what he wanted as they should have done, and that's why it takes time to learn. I'd be very, very, very surprised if we saw anything like that today. Pressing and the squeezing again, they're pushing high up the field of play, forcing our man back. It's almost like a collective relief in uh, in Guwahati. You can almost feel that the vibe of the stadium almost got behind the team in the first 24 25 minutes. Sunil Chetri delivering his 72nd goal for the country in his 112th appearance. Good pressing this once again, good pressure from Ashik Purunian. A revelation, he's been playing just behind Sunil Chetri and switching with him as well. Did we not say that in the Asian Cup when he started as centre forward? What a revelation! He closes down, he closes to the ground quickly. He looks cumbersome, he looks a little bit slower, but I tell you what, when you're out there, he closes those yards very, very quickly. It's a leggy stride that puts players under pressure, and he does nick the ball back in important areas. That's where the threat looms large from uh, Oman's point of view. On that right-hand side, the combination of... Uh, Raid, Saad, the right wing back. We've seen bombing forward a few times. It's not quite come to fruition just yet. Good interception by Rahul Beke. Important touch that from Rahul Beke. Read it well. Well, Pesayari taking the throw in quickly. You'll see that as well from Oman now. You can see the two centre halves pushing forward. Everybody forward for Oman. 
Al Musallam, Al Ghailani, the two centre halves near the halfway line. Trying to commit as many bodies forward as possible, trying to take the pressure to India. And that's with the problem under Shtimats as well, not being able to protect the lead. Taking the lead three times, not being able to hold on to it. I, I tell you, that was very interesting. You just saw Sunil having a go at a dancer there because the ball's moving, and what happened is Sunil's been told not to go so far back and track all the way in. Here's the goal, though. Didn't get that one wrong, he tracked that one right to the back of the net. But I tell you what, if you're the coach and if you're Koomans and you're sitting on the bench and you see that, you'd be absolutely raging. And raging more so because it's 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 not something that he wouldn't have seen before in all the videos with all the technology now available to him and his team. It's a side foot pass that's gone 15, 20 yards. It isn't even drilled into the box, and no one's reacted except one person. Sunil. A similar goal as well against Kenya in the final of the Hero Intercontinental Cup last year. Comes to mind. Training ground free kick converted with effortless ease. Much like uh, the defending there from India. Well, they're having to dig in a little bit now, India. No man just up in it a little bit. They can't break them down, though. Like I said, the left back. Playing more centrally now. The captain have to deliver a lot more. 165 caps for Al Mahadri. That is a lot of football under his belt. 34 years of age as well. You'll see in footballing terms, that's about 45 years. <laughs> Doesn't even include club football. No, I know. You made me chuckle there, Ramant. Thank you. <laughs> well, this man, 35 years of age. A year older than Al Mahajri, the captain on the other side. This guy is turning 52 tomorrow. Could be a nice birthday present for him if India can hold on to this lead or, dare I say, add to it. Oh, if he could take four points from the opening two games, this one and Qatar away in a couple of days' time, he'd be absolutely over the moon. The big question is if India do go on to hold on to the lead in the first 45, how do they approach the second half? I think they'll keep going the same way. Oman have to come out a little bit more if they want to get something from the match, and I think little gaps will start appearing. And that's where the pace of Adanta. You may see the introduction of one or two of the other players coming on as well. You've got a, a Chanti that's very, very quick, who's on the bench. Pace would actually really go against our man there in the second 45. Good defensive shape from India as well. You can just see Adil holding his position right next to Sunday's Jingan there as well. Well intercepted once again. Rahul Peke to Udanta. Good decision that from the referee. Good decision. Sometimes it's difficult to see Raul Becky having a fight and work his way. But did you see the way that they were playing the ball? Raul played it in out wide to Adanta, got it back, got closed down. It wasn't the best layoff to Becky, but he did ever so well just to hold off the challenge. There you can see the little tug on the shirt from Al Mahadri. That's why the referee got it absolutely spot on. See a bit of frustration creeping in as well. That's the gamesmanship, you'll, you'll see that emerge. And they're happy to take their time, just passing it around. They let Oman come to them and then create the spaces and try and get in behind them. Well, we've seen them mix it up, we've seen them go short, they can go long. That's exactly what they've done, Mace, on cue. But it's that second ball that's the key. Roland picking it up on that occasion. Start again. Draw them out, draw the Armanis to you. Now we'll go short. Good play. Hit with a little too much power for Subhashish Bose's liking, and that's why he could not come anywhere near it. I think he thought it was going to be a bit, a bit more of a stringent tackle on that occasion from another Tapa. Right, so far so good from the Blue Tigers' perspective, but what about Oman? Because they would have come to India thinking probably a better start than having to play Qatar in their first game. India, of course, play Qatar away in their next game, which is just uh, five days away. This is possibly...
from their point of view. It's the toughest possible start. Yeah, but like I said, I mean, if they could nick a point there, just go and shut up shop and have four points from the opening two games. I think three points from the opening two games is probably what the target was, but to, if they could just nick something there as well, what an unbelievable start. But they are mixing the football up, India, short, long. Our man don't know whether they're coming or going. Raul oh, Dicky cutting in and then using that challenge, which is why he's out of position now, and Roland Borges has to mop it up for him. Danta managing to keep it in, and then Rahul Beke does the rest. Or does he? Did, it, did exactly what he had to do there, just trying to clip it into Sunil. That was a lunging challenge just to intercept it on that occasion from Almanda. Is the match not happy? But again, Raul's got to be very careful that he doesn't get sucked too far out. It was Roland that had to trap back in there to that right-back position to deal with the ball. Great ball. Better control from Udanta as well. Who are the willing runners? There's one you'll always find. Nanaru Thapa, but this time his pass goes absolutely nowhere. Should we say straight into the hands of the goalkeeper, Faiz? Plays his football in Saudi Arabia. Well released there as well. But Gurpreet Singh Sandhu, much like his uh, opposite number, or should we say, the man on the opposite side in goal, reads the danger nice and quickly, intercepts it well, clears it away. Yeah, a, little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a scary moment there, Anand. I mean, it was just a long punt upfield, really, from Fires. Defenders just caught napping. Gurpreet, no, right on cue, coming out and dealing with the ball. And just have to be a little patience, show a little bit of patience here. Straight into the one man wall, the number seven. Was he ten yards away when it was kicked? Nine and a half. <laughs> He's the biggest man on the pitch. Saad will have to take some personal responsibility for that. No foul given. Raul Beke on his bike straight away. Chests it down, Sunil Chetri. Takes his time as well. Good, good experience, good composure shown. They don't fancy this, old man. I'm telling you, India have gotten rattled in the challenges. They're winning the balls, they're closing down quickly. And now they're having a little nick out back at India. They have got this up, so this first 38 minutes so far and then has been absolutely perfect from India. Couldn't have asked for a better start to the campaign than this. Like you say, now it's about small goals, it's about small targets. Get through to half-time with this, regroup and come out with a second 45. And the throw-in going India's way and they've just got to look back at where the goals are coming from. North East United FC, side that plays in the Hero Indian Super League, of course, in attendance here in the, what is their home stadium. Their new head coach, Robert Jani, is also in attendance, also from Croatia, much like uh, the coach of the national team of India, Igor Stimat. Roland again picking off the ball, reading the game very, very well this first 45. Was rolling like uh, Coach Pradeep Reddy said, very familiar with this ground as well, having played Light is Straight with Northeast United FC. It helps, it does help, Anand. Flick on headers work beautifully for India, not just for Udanta, you've seen Anirudh Thapa execute that as well. Just trying to think, the last time Udanta won a flick on header? It, it's not renowned in his game, I mean, he's it, shown a lot more courage. He came in at the far post and towered above somebody, came over the top and tried to head it back across goal. There's been a new dimension added to his game under Stimac because normally he would just have ducked, turned and got to the ball to look to cross it again. He's looking to try and attack and get on the ball now. Change is coming, sweeping across Indian football. 
same time, he's not paid to credit the work done over the last four years as well. The interaction, and all the camps that uh, that he's held so far, and all the press interactions as well. But but how how are Oman looking to score over here? Is the important thing from Irvin Truman's point of view? India have conceded 13 goals so far under Igor Stimats, and two of them have come from set pieces, but. It's true ball. Six of their 13 goals have come from true balls. You see another cheap foul being conceded in the middle of the park. But there's no need. There's no need. Sandish only has to go and just just push him away from goal. You don't have to put the challenge in there. You invite pressure back onto yourselves. Go close down, jockey him away from your goal. Musalam and Al Ghailani once again the two center halves pushing forward trying to make something out of this last couple of minutes look in this shape. first half look at the shape sorry Anna. look at the shape you can see the banks you can see how they're defending India well done on keeping that in he's one of foul as well so she's forced just claim just claiming his uh, innocence there but uh, much like India had a set piece from a glorious position Oman can claim that for themselves as well yeah, nice little bit of skill here, Ray, just pushing the ball, Subasic just catching him, there you go. Right on the metatarsal, as they're now known. Don't break your foot now, you break a metatarsal. No, you don't like it, do you? It's a broken foot. Now, India need to compete. They need to stay strong and stay solid. Salah to deliver it. Let's see if Oman can make something out of this first half. It's been all India. Apart from one effort from Abdul Aziz that disturbed Gurpreet Singh Sandhu. Don't go to sleep. Sandy's just been told there, none of that. Otherwise, I'm going to turn around and give a penalty. Pritik taken quickly as well, a chance of a header, but well cleared away. Well done by Rahul Bheke. And the escape, the threat of uh, that set piece. Roman will feel a lot better after that. Press forward in numbers and just have to get closer and closer and once again they have to show a lot more patience than they have so far here's the chance of a header and a good strong hand from Gurpreet Singh Sandhu saves India not called the great wall of India for nothing stunning stunning save absolutely stunning how Al Majeri has missed this goodness only knows while well, they were working on their crosses yesterday and it's a decent ball in he's just got in between Beke and Sandish but what a stunning save that is from the big man a little bit straight at him, but he's got to score. Al Majiri has to score that first header. Gurpreet Singh doing his job, keeping it out. Great, great save. And that could be the turning point in this game. Well, what a moment that is, and what a moment that could prove to be in this World Cup qualifying as well from India's point of view. Sunil Chetri scoring on one side of the pitch, Gurpreet Singh Sandhu saving them on the other side. Strong challenge in the meanwhile. India need half-time now. They're just getting a little bit rattled, they need to just compose themselves here. They've got to compete, they've got to try and get hold of the ball and keep it for the next 60 seconds or so. Because the pressure is starting to mount here. For Oman, headed away by the goal scorer Sunil Chetri. Who else? <laughs> He's got to do it. He's got a couple of minutes in the first half. Anything will do at the moment. But that's not what India won in the second half. Is it at that plays completely into the hands of Oman, and Oman would love that. And they'd love to see more and more of this from India.
Is he going to blow on 45? There haven't really been any stoppages. Just a minute added on to what we're hearing in the stadium. And, uh, that's why Sudeshish Post is taking his time. It's the confirmation of that. One added minute, Sunday's Jingen came close to scoring himself. So did Udanta. It could have been 3-0 India. It could have been 3-2 India. Eventually it's 1-0 India so far. Unless Udanta can make something out of it. Great defending that. Fearless and absolutely committed from Al Musalam. He's not touched him there, Udanta. He's had to deal with the ball here. And he's given a free kick. Watch. He's not touched him. Here's the save again. Sandish and Beke need to communicate there. He's just ghosted in between the two of them, but take nothing away from the big man. Absolute stunning save from him. Seconds left on the clock. Well, not really, because the Iranian referee has blown the whistle and closed the first half. Sunil Chetri in his 112th appearance for the national team scores his 72nd goal in the Blues of India. And of course, his second versus Oman. And that stands as the difference between the two teams, Paul Maysfield. Great first 45 minutes from India there. They just had to hang on a little bit in the last couple of minutes, but it'll be a well-earned break and a well-earned 15 minutes at half-time for them. Can they come out and do it in the second 45? I'm sure Stimach will get his boys all up for this, but it's a great, great start to the campaign from India. Welcome back to this coverage of the preliminary joint qualification for the FIFA World Cup 2022 and the AFC Asian Cup 2023. This round two clash from Group E has brought us to the northeastern part of India in Assam where Guwahati is playing host to the Indian men's football team who are taking on Oman tonight. And Igor Shlimat's men, 1-0 to the good courtesy of uh, the captain Suni Chetri's goal in the 24th minute. That stands as the difference. One change for Oman though, 
at the halftime mark. And that sees the introduction of their number 16, Mohsen Saleh Al Ghassani, who's no doubt looking to find an equalizer for the Reds. Comes in place of Red. And a fascinating first half, particularly for the fans in Guwahati to watch because uh, despite Oman being the more favoured opposition, India have given an almighty account of themselves. And once again, who else? But their inspiration so often, Sunil Chetri proving to be the difference so far on the night as Oman kick off proceedings in the second half here at the Indira Gandhi Athletic Stadium in Guwahati. Paul Macefield joining me in commentary once again. Big ass, big test, a different test this second 45 minutes now for India. Solid that first 45, confirmation there of the substitution is Raid, who's gone off, who was supposed to start on the left-hand side, but started on the right, was ill-effective, which is why he's been sacrificed, hence the change. So, Musen given his opportunity and chance to add something going forwards for our man. Let's see what Oman have up their sleeve in the second half. In the first half, it was all India, barring two chances. Both were saved by Gurpreet Singh Sandhu's strong right hand. First, the snapshot from Abdul Aziz, their number nine. Strong right wrist from Gurpreet Singh Sandhu coming in the way. And then an instinctive world class save late on in the first half, ensuring that India went into half time 1 0 to the courtesy of this man whose pass doesn't quite find the man he was looking for in Udanta, who could have well been the difference on the night as well. He hadn't hit the crossbar early on in the first half. Oman on the attack now. Looking to turn Sunday's Jing in on the other side. Good move already, and much better from Oman this. Yeah, they've come out with a spring in their step, which is why India will have to weather a little bit of a storm here. Here's the substitute, Mussen, looking to try and cause problems straight from the off, just firing it into the box, but... Well defended by India. Taken quickly by Oman. India still organizing themselves in the meanwhile. A cross comes in as well. Opportunity for Oman. Taking their time. Put it out of the box. Get away, but only just. Once again, as was the pattern towards the end of the first half from Oman, pushing more bodies forward, committing more men forward towards the cause of that equalizer which really could have come if it wasn't for Gurpreet's heroics towards the end of that first half. Yet to keep a clean sheet this year. Of course, it kept five in the first seven games last year. Seventh game this year so far, but it's uh, the second corner already in the second half for Oman. And looking to make a difference with uh, set pieces themselves. Not like that, of course. Gone far too long for them to exercise any control. And you just need to learn from the opening games that they've had under coach Stimac and what he wants from them. They've got to keep this composure, they've got to keep the compactness, and they will have to weather the storm on occasion. It does happen in football where a team tries to come out and get straight back at you. So it's an important test this opening 10 15 minutes for India. The ball to Chetri to Peke out wide towards. Udanta cut in nicely by the number 15 for India. Good sliding challenge that, and if that hadn't come, it could have been a different story. Good experience shown there by Al Ghelani as well, who was on a yellow card, mind you. There you go, plenty of space now for them to. into the hands. Something there, Adanta needed to chase back in there and add that extra number, and that's why it looked a little bit overloaded on that left-hand side for Oman. Now Becky had to try and deal with things himself. Again, looking to get behind that Omani defence, our India. Ashik was ever so busy in the first half. 
instrumental in almost everything good for India in the opposition half. This time, not quite so, gone out of play. Yeah, a little bit of a waste there, Ashik. Not too many options in the box, but just showed a little bit too much of the ball down to the line, rather than just retaining, waiting for that support to come. He's taking his time, though, the keeper. Fires. Might as well have taken it quickly if he's going to do that. Worried look on his face. And it tells a story. Mervyn Kuman has got the experience of being assistant to his uh, his brother, Kuman brothers, Southampton and at Everton. Was on the Euros with Netherlands in 1988 as a midfielder. They just want to keep hold of the ball a little more. They were doing that beautifully in that stretch between the minute minute 25 and about minute 40. They're still trying to play a little bit, trying to play through, which is good. So again, they're mixing it up. But as you can see, the tempo's dropped slightly from our man. That's what happens when you get hold of the ball for 30, 40 seconds. It gives you confidence back. Strong header from Kingan as well. And good desire shown by Anirutapa, winning the ball back for India. Udanta just got his feet tangled up there a little bit, which just allowed Al-Musalam to go forward. Play there from Almando. The fans are really getting behind the team now. This is exactly what they were doing in the first half as well. But did you see there? No panic from Ashi. Just waited for that pass to become available, kept the ball. That's a yellow card. Subasish is going to find himself in a spot of bother for that. Nope, got away with it. Taken quickly as well. Again, Sandeep Jingan has to track back quickly. One of the substitutes, Al Ghassani, brought in to do exactly that. Just inject a bit of pace and purpose to their attacks, which was conspicuous by its absence in the first half. That's the captain, Al Mahajri, looped in by the fullback Saad. Ooh, dear. Not sure about that one. Sonal does that a lot of the time, just gets his body in the way. Did it hit the hand? It's a dangerous position. Where is it now? Headed away by Thapa. I tell you, he's played really well so far in this game as well. Brandon. You haven't seen him go one way, but I tell you what, you've seen him stop people from playing. Great turn there as well. Headed away by Subashish Bos. Brandon once again. Ashik with his long strides. Typical of his play, but once again, not quite the end product he was looking for. And easily won back by Harib. Underrated in the middle of the park for Oman. I'll tell you what, he's just been stamped on there, Ashi, because there's a little bit of afters going on there. That's why Shtimats just uh, registering his protest with Hasan Akrami. Here's a chance, but not the way India wanted it to be. This was nearly an own goal from Anir Uthapa. And Gurpreet Singh Sandhu just couldn't believe his eyes for a second, I'm sure. Go on up, Oman. Yeah, sometimes you've just got to put your body on the line, and that's exactly what Tapa did. Wasn't sure what was in and around him, so had to get something on the ball. Again, they were working on their crosses. That one trying to be whipped back to the penalty spot. And Ratapa read the danger. Taking long once again, targeting that uh, that area just behind the fullback. Obeke well, clears it away. Once again, enough men near the halfway line for Oman to bring it back into the business area. Albuseri. Diving header from Adil Khan. Header comes in, Gurpreet Singh Sandhu. And it draws a huge cheer from the crowd. 
but he'll be the first one to admit that that was fairly routine by his lofty standards. Again, it's another cross into a dangerous area, and again, it's another little free header. That's what you've got to stop. This Indian defence has to just tighten up slightly, but again, the big man in goal making absolutely no mistake and making it look easy. Double the shots for Oman in the game, but that doesn't matter. What matters is the scoreline, and that reads 1-0 to India at the moment. But Oman are searching, they're probing, and they're looking for gaps in that Indian defence. They're looking for tired bodies in the middle of the park as well. Brandon again, fantastic, working away in the middle of the park there. He's added another dimension to his game, I'm telling you. He'll only get better. And there's that trip, clearly a free kick. He's on the turf, but he didn't give up. Now he gets up and he's ready to take the free kick. Chetri the target. Two defenders around him. Oh, lovely piece of skill. Should be offside. Isn't given. It is. It is. It is now. I'll tell you what, you know, I'm not sure. I think Subasis may just attract in a, a little bit. A little bit too quickly there. All he had to do was stand still. If he'd have stood still, there was 100%. He was offside. But I bet you that's a very, very close call. But again, it's Abdul Aziz that's causing all the issues, the problems. You have a look, you have a look, you have a look. It's tight. He's onside there for me. All Subasic had to do was stop and stand still because he was a yard ahead of him and he would have been just running into an offside position. Got out of jail there, the back four. Almandar, the player there, offside, and the protest was registered by the substitute, Al Ghassani. The only substitute so far in the game, although that might change because India are eyeing a substitute of their own. Fires in all sorts of trouble there in the Omani goal. But he's not really in the Omani goal because he's out of the 18 yard box at the moment. He finds his way back. He's a liability, isn't he? This football in Saudi Arabia, 31 year old. Cleared away by Adil Khan. Once again, at least two players to receive that ball for the Reds. Intercepted by Adil Khan. Given away to. Anil Thapa by Ashik Kurunian. What a ball that is from Thapa, almost finding the man he was looking for. It well, certainly looked like that from the from the vantage point. From our commentary point, that wasn't a million miles away. It was like the one that Brandon played in the first half, wasn't it? Tell you what, the ball hasn't gone out of place, so we can't have the change yet. Interesting that the pace of Changti will be used. Also interesting the pace at which Oman are moving the ball. Salah. Saad should have cut it back. Gives it straight to Gurpreet Singh Sandhu. With all his experience, he was alert to the occasion. You see Ashik having to do two jobs here. He's having to try and stop that first one. Then the second one, somebody needs to come out and help him out. So this is, could just have come a little bit quicker, but again, that big man is having one of those days at the moment where everything he's doing is absolutely spot on. Good keeping, good angles from Gurpreet. Strong challenge, that will draw a card from the referee. It is a yellow. Luckily for Roland Borges, because that was a studs up challenge and he just like to see if he missed the ball altogether over there. The referee didn't like it at all. And the referee just telling the players as well after the little bit of afters. He's on the floor, you know. OK, if he's caught the man, then, yeah, it's a yellow card. Played well, this young man. Very impressed. Another little dimension to his game as well with that tracking back in. May not have been the most offensive, but defensively he was spot on today, Brandon. On 
comes the youngster, Lalan Zuala Changte. 11th cap for India. I'd love to add to his tally of four goals so far. It'll be interesting to see how he slotted into this, uh, his 11 now. In the hole by the looks of it, because it looks as though Ashik has just dropped onto the left-hand side. Maybe looking to give a little bit of help and support to Sonal Chetri up top. Certainly got pace to burn. Be interesting if India use him with a counter-attacking strategy. If they allow Oman to put the pressure that they have done so far. So comfortable with the ball as well. Both the centre halves, Al Musalam on that occasion. Okay, but a passing it ten yards to the wide man, it's not difficult. To be honest, Dan, it's when you've got the ball and you've got to come forwards with it and you find your pass. As a centre back, it's that's easy to do. Well read yet again, Roland. Take his time to deliver that through in. Here it is again. Flash looking to go down the line. Good defensive challenge by Amos Alami. Got the ball. Easily won there by Sandish. Turns back towards where it matters. Given away. Challenge from the back. The referee's okay with that because he won the ball. I don't think there's anything wrong with the lad who's gone down. Alba Saidi. He's won the ball clearly. And it's not straight from behind. Look, it's more side on. So good refereeing. Increasingly looking very one-dimensional at the moment. They've got to inject something else than just the substitute Al Ghassani at the moment. Just the one change so far from them, but it hasn't worked entirely. They managed to get in behind the Indian defence every now and then. Luckily for Oman, that was Rahul Peke and not Lalanzuala Changte who's just come on. Did you not see him win the ball and just sprint 60 yards in the field of play there? Sani, Saab. Once again, the cross left, left a lot to be desired. And that's been the story of his second half. Much better first half, though, when he was combining much better with uh, Raid, who was, of course, substituted at the stroke of half time. Watch this. This was the one that was it. Watch what happens now. I think Ashley gets stamped on. There you go. That's naughty. That's very, very naughty. I said it, said it, saw it. I think that stamp tells you the kind of authority India has stamped in this game. This sums up the story so far. Past the album mark. Oh, oh! Not given. The referees just turned around. Still pleading the case. They won the ball back anyway. Borges from distance. And he's apologised to pretty much all of Gohati after that. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's not renowned for his distance shooting, is he, Rowling? I mean, let's be honest, does well to get it out of his feet. Surely a little roll into Sunil. Or, you know, a Dantelu was there. Just give it to them, let them get on with it. Light up Goa to Gohati, so infectious is that smile. I can tell you, we missed that by a mile. Once again, given away, just creeping into their play now. These little mistakes, obviously tired bodies and minds, no doubt. But India will have to be careful here. Still at least half an hour to play in this game. Al Ghassani 
He's looking to take that corner quickly as well. He'll just have to. But that's the opportunity once again. The referee just turned around, Mace. Yeah, another penalty. He's leaning in from that angle, you can see. Defender doing just enough. This young man again adding more value to him and to his own stock. Great atmosphere here in Gurren Guwahati. Told it was sold out yesterday. There's good reason. India have enjoyed playing football here. One against Nepal, 2-0. 1-0 up, up here against Oman. And hear that cheer from the Blue Pilgrims. Sunil Chetri releases it quickly. But slightly wider than Lalanzola Changte would have liked it to be. With his right foot. Would have liked to return ball, but he never got it. And that's why that chance is gone again. Again, a youngster that's got to know his limitations at a certain time. Doesn't need to do that. Should just keep possession. It is unfavoured foot. You're not going to blaze one into the top corner. You're going to hit one of those in about 200 shots when you're young. I you know you want to try it, but you've got to know what you can and can't do. He's desperate to make an impact, isn't he? knows the kind of contribution he needs to make and he's got not got a lot of time but sometimes you've got to be a piece of that puzzle absolutely spot on his job today is to help see the team over the line you only got to look at Brandon for that side definitely offside given offside good pitching Sandhu still on the turf still saving and still keeping his clean sheet intact Tell you what, could find himself in a spot of bother here, Sandish, because he just launched that ball away. Just because he hoofed it and cleared the danger. Well, there's no need for that. There, oh, it's marginal. It's marginal. There, you can see Sandish, why well, he's picked up that yellow card. Now, he has to be careful for the remaining 20 odd minutes. Yep, there you go, half a yard, but if you have a look, the foot there of Subasish hasn't been highlighted. That's a close one. Long ball forward. But luckily for Gurpreet Singh Sandhu and India, Algasani couldn't quite get the touch he desired. Flashlights coming on here in Guwahati. It does get dark here pretty early here in the northeast, but Sunday's Jingan. Just a confirmation of that yellow card. It's looking bright though for India. And it's not because of the flashlights. Fabulous scenes here in the northeast. Really creating a spectacle. As did India in the first half. They've had to absorb waves and waves of Omani pressure in the second. And they continue to do so over here. Oman keep coming at them. India just have to hold on to their shape somehow. And Oman just have to be patient and have to persevere. They're not tearing them apart though, are they? India are defending stoutly. Well, the chance of a header for Abdul Aziz. Oh. Still floating around, not cleared well enough at the first opportunity. Eventually done and dealt with by Adil Khan. That was a nervy moment in defence for India. Got to deal with the ball, just block it clear. Don't try and lash at the ball. That's the last we'll see of uh, Salah. He's. Uh, Placed by Al Khafri. A couple of attacking options being used here. Al Ghassani and not Al Khafri. <laughs> How much gas does he have left in the tank? Not enough, you fear. Ashik Gurunian has only just come back from uh, injury. He's given an almighty account of himself in the first 45 minutes. But it's the next 45 that was always going to test him. 
I think the 70 is given a great account of himself. He's just coming towards the end of his steam. As mentioned, to come back, what was it, injured in a game? Was it the 24th of February, I think it was, was his last game of football? And to perform for 70 minutes the way he has is absolutely unbelievable. I really mean that because no pre-season, so he's having to work incredibly hard just to get up to speed. Well done once again by Roland Borges in India's uh, rather deep-lying midfield at the moment. But they're keeping things compact, and it's difficult to break in between the lines there. It's a little bit naughty from Albusaidi. Just treading on the uh, foot of Adanta. Here's the clearance. Look, why lash at it? You're not left footed, you just block it away, push it away to safety. Width, height, distance. That's what you want from a defender, whether it's a header, whether it's a clearance, just block the ball away. It was a little off balance as well. But eventually, produced the goods. But it begs the question, have India found their centre-back pairing? If, if, if India were to hold on to this to this scoreline, has uh, Shtimat seen enough of Sandeep Jing and Adil Khan to go with them? He did call Anasad Athorika back out of retirement. He's got Narendra Gerlot to became the first Indian in, to be born in the 21st century in score for him, but that's not enough defensively, is it? Still early days in his career. Nutmegs, Lalanzuala Changte does uh, the right-back sob. Almost a fabulous <laughs> touch there from Ashik Kurunia. <laughs> that was almost... I mean, you'd be waxing lyrical over that, wouldn't you? If, if someone like a Ronaldo or a Messi did that and kept that in play, you'd be all over it, wouldn't you? He wasn't far off there, Ashik. Nice piece of skill. Headed away, no chance is taken this time. Anywhere will do. Even though that concedes a corner. Yeah, he's not happy with himself there. He knows, look, he's tried to flick at this rather than just put his head there. He puts his head there and puts it back from where it came from. It, it, it's easy to defend now. A little bit more pressure for India to deal with. Another Omani corner. How many is that now? We're, we're losing count. I think it's the fifth in this half, and that's why India will begin to worry. Much better this from Oman. A better corner than we've seen so far in this half. But who's there? Sunil Chetri is there helping out his defence. Stand up, don't dive in. Mahajri it's a good ball. Ghafri! Not well enough from Gurpreet this time, but just enough for Rahul Beke, his club teammate, to do the rest. That's good enough from Gurpreet. Let me tell you, Anarud Tapa there needs to have a finger pointed at him because he didn't go close to his man and allowed him far too much time and space to create that opportunity for himself. Big, big save from the big man again. You wait for the replay, Anant. That's going to be creeping in the far corner. The big man's done well there. Saad once again. And the ball quickly, India. Always better to see. That's the experience of Hari. Been quiet by his standards in the middle for Oman. And once again, that true ball, which is supposed to work. If they were to watch the videos of this Indian team under Shtimat, hasn't look, worked look, today. Look how slow Anur Tapa was to go and close down there then. He's got tired legs, that's the problem, that's the issue. And it allowed that time and space for him to try and bend it in that far corner. Big save again from the big man. You look at me, Anand, but I'm telling you, all these little saves that he's made, even the one that looked nice and comfortable, they are so, so important 
for this team if they're going to get the victory today. And sometimes you also get the feeling it's one of those days that there was no player in a red shirt waiting to just tap it in. When a ball like that was just bouncing around. That's why it'll be difficult to beat India at home. Not good enough from Chante on the first occasion. But he'll have to do the rest now. Anirudhapa in around Al Kharfi. I'll play better. That's better. He's taking his time much better from Ashi. But asking too much of even Lalanzuala Changte and his pace and purpose. And this time, Huayes does well enough. Changte's just come on, and it's Ashi that's just tracked himself all the way back to defend as well. I think he's blowing a little bit now. Wouldn't surprise me if we see him come off. He's had a real, real good shift today. Solid, solid 75 minutes or so from him. Really proud of himself. Because he'd love a win here. Nothing better than a goal or a performance in a winning cause. Chetri has scored five goals out of the eight in the Stimats era, but none in a winning cause. Holds on to it. Does good Preet Singh Sandhu. Well. Even as a centre-back, you don't mind that. Even if there's a collision there, or your keeper comes straight through you, as long as it's in his hands, that's all that matters. It's not in the back of the net. Well done once again. Chante. Trying to use his skill and then his pace to get past the challenge of Saad. He doesn't have the strength to compete. You just see, I mean, he's, he's just holding him off. Like he's walking past a bush and just pushing it out of the way. He's got to be a little bit more tenacious there, Chanti. Good performance, son. Well done. Great 75 minutes, well, 77 minutes from Ashi. Watch him in the future. I'm telling you, he is the real deal. I'll tell you, it tells you a thing or two about Shtimats as well. To take off Ashik Kurunan and to bring on Manbir Singh at the 77th or the 78th minute mark when you're 1-0 up and you're looking to hold on to it. Well, he's not. There's a good ball forward and Gurpreet lets it go. Yeah, good goalkeeping there from Gurpreet, just allowing that to go behind. He's done it for a reason though, Anand, because he's got the fresh legs on of Changti. Manbir now becomes a target, so they can go a little bit longer. He can battle and fight for it and try and win the little Nikons. You look at Chanti's pace, or Danta's pace, to get in behind. Sunil will drop just in the hole now. So, and he's got fresh legs, so you go out there, son. Give me ten minutes of full out, full running, and go and cause a problem. That's exactly why he's brought Manbir on. It's also quite telling, because India have never scored in the last 15 minutes of... The spell of play, as I said, it brings about a diving save from Fires. Was that, was that the head, curse. Yeah, was that Manbir just trying to get the header? Takes his time. I can't quite get past Al Busseri. He brought a smile to my face just as I was saying it. Well, the, the ball, the long one, to the big man. The big man ducks, there you go, straight over it, caused problems, and Sunil's almost in. Brilliant. Good impression of Superman, though, from Fires, wasn't it? Absolutely. Henry once again involved. The danger for India lies on this side because they've conceded two goals in the Shtimats era in the last 15 minutes, so they ha they'd have to be wary. Don't say that. They are vulnerable, and that's why. No, but they've learned. It, it's a learning process, a learning curve. The other games, they don't mean anything because this is what counts. This is official competition. 
the other competitions are there to give those players the experience and the opportunity to play the national team. Great to win them, don't get me wrong, and that's exactly what the teams will want to do. But now, this, you've got to win. You're in this position, you're in a great position. Can you see it through? This could be a massive, massive turning point in Indian football moving forwards, if they can hang on to this. It's been a special place, Guwahati as well. 2015 started off their World Cup qualifying with a win against Nepal. That was the first round. Then it all fell apart when the dream was diminished. It was rekindled with the Asian Cup qualifying, beating Lao here 6 1. Massive scoreline. Now back here again against Oman to begin. Look who's chasing down now. Full sprint at that speed. 35 years young and just showing the team why he is captain, leader, legend. And also knows that 2-0 will certainly put this game to bed at this stage. Because Oman really haven't threatened, they haven't found that one ball that could pierce the Indian defence. They've troubled Gurpreet with a shot or two, but other than that, hasn't been much to write home about, quite literally. They've got a friendly on the 10th, they don't play till the 10th of October. And that's something of a worry for their Dutch coach. Yeah, it is a bit the first game that they'll have lost under his tenure as well. I think there's too much in that. I think there's just a little bit of overzealousness and keenness from Al Kaldi, who's just come onto the pitch. because plan B also hasn't worked so far and he's got about 10 minutes to do that. That will certainly help his cause. Crosses like that, of course, and Udanta straight away apologises. Yeah, he's that, better than that. Yeah, that won't help his cause, will it, Udanta? As a winger, you need to deliver quality into the box. I think we've said, haven't we, before, Anand, he's so quick he gets into those positions that it's, it just lacks that quality, the percentage time. You need to deliver that ball into the box, into quality areas time after time after time great chance once again and that's it from Oman's point of view and the bench celebrates they were threatening and they were threatening they never found the ball through until then a goal to savor for Almandar and one to forget in a hurry for India as they now have to look for a winner if they don't want to settle for this, a shake of the head from Sunil Chetri. And frustration writ large in that Indian defence on the face of Gurpreet Singh Sandhu, who'd done absolutely nothing wrong until this happened. And he's just made a run. Raul Beke has either played him on side or has decided to chase him down. Gurpreet, could he have come a little bit earlier? That's a question you've got to ask, but take nothing away from the finish. Al Mandar made that run from. Well, the left flank all the way across the field of play. No one tracked him, no one went with him or close enough to him. Just flicks it in. Now another test and challenge for India. Can they see this through and at least get a point? Or can they nick one? Or can they hang on now and, and not concede again? This is a testing time for them. They come once again to India. Sudhir Chetri is there. It's too wide for him to do it himself. Cross comes in, chance for India! At the far post. And inches away was Lalim Zuala Chongte. From finding his fifth in national colours. And maybe the most significant of them. Got to score. Got to score. Even if it was a shot, and I think it was. Lovely ball flicked through there for Sunil. Cute, the little back heel. Why has he just fizzed that across the face of goal? And that's what he maybe's done, yeah. Manvir just fires it in, and Chanti just inches away from burying that one. What a challenge from Sandesh on the other side of the pitch, though. Given away. Rahul Peke doesn't find his man. There's nobody there, actually. Manvir Singh had cut in. It's almost like muscle memory for him to look for Odanta, his club teammate on that right wing. Papa to Manvir, who now finds Udanta, who's still got enough pace. 
but Al Buseri does ever so well. Not happy with the assistant though. We'll get a little ticking off from the referee. Been told to get on with things, I think. What a way to score your first goal for the national team and only his fourth appearance for his country as well. Almandar looked ever so good in that first half. We talked about how he'd swap sides with Raid, combine ever so well with Saad in that first half, and then to bring up that goal. Oh. How many times do we see Sunil Gamble and just get in between players? Just couldn't get there then. It's a nice response from India. They've at least up the tempo and up the game a little bit. It's almost like they needed that equaliser to just up the tempo a little bit. They were guilty of that against Syria as well in the last competitive game that they played. It's allowed the pressure or allowed the opposition to just exert the pressure in them a little bit. Never mind the shots because that doesn't quite tell the story of the game. Better from Manbi to Thapa. Roland Borges with a a touch too strong for his own good. Couldn't go in there, couldn't take one for the team, he's on a yellow card. Great opportunity here for Oman to make it 2-1. And if that challenge hadn't come in, that would have been 2-1. What about that from Sunday's Jingen? That's why you don't get booked for a silly challenge early on, because Rowling would have, would have given the foul away on the edge of the box at the other end. As it is, they're almost exposed here. He just takes his time, tries to pick his spot, does Al Graffri. The substitute, good, good defending in the end though. Sandish just narrowing those angles along with Gerpreet. Oh, it's suddenly come to life this game with that equaliser. Will India be ruining their missed chances from the first half? Can Oman make this 2-1 on the other side? Challenge from the back. No foul given from Abdul Aziz. Play goes on. That's the second or third time in the last five minutes. Anna Tapper just looking a little bit leggy, a little bit tired. I just wonder if they might make a change. Only had two changes, if I'm not mistaken. Changti and Manvir coming on. Could do some fresh legs in the middle of the park, I think. Plans to do it, he's got to do it now. This no substitute Been limbering up at this stage just got to come on straight away come on trying to get behind it the Indian defense once again goes past the face of goal from the other substitute who made an impact straight away Al Ghassani always going wide pulled the trigger just pulled his sharpness in Not done yet, Gohati. They want more and they want a goal. And they're making it very clear to the national team. The substitution certainly suggests that. And that was the intention. They don't like a goal, but there's 11 men out there in red shirts that are going to try and stop them. This man be it, causing a nuisance for himself again. Went in for the challenge to Vashish Bose. Roland Borges' interception takes it back towards the Reds. Al Ghassani. He's got a willing runner. Al Khafri only manages to find Adil Khan and a block from him. Changte does the sensible thing, goes all the way back towards the goalkeeper. Chetri's touch, far too heavy. drink as well and then gets on with it straight away so we've got a few minutes to get a 73rd for India second although on the other side you got Abdul Aziz scored two famously in that 3-0 win for Oman here's a chance Oman coming again at the Indian defense great opportunity and what a goal that is what a finish we're talking about Abdul Aziz's brace the last time these two sides met in a World Cup qualifier to come from a goal down 
and to deflate Indian spirits in Guwahati. Almandar, what a player he is. That is a stunning strike. Let me tell you, that is an absolute stunning strike from Almandar. To pick the ball up where he did and to do what he did. Wow. You can see there, Stimac can't quite believe it. But I tell you what, here he is out wide. Raul Becky tries to be clever and nick the ball in front. All he's got to do is just stand up, drop the shoulder, tuck back in. Sandish is rocked on his heels. That is right in the top corner. That is an absolute stunning strike past the big man in goal. It's amazing when you score a goal, what confidence does for you. What a shame for India. Three minutes added on as well, just enough time for him to possibly look for a hat-trick now. What a famous hat-trick that would be. You get your first goal for the national team and you make it two in eight minutes. And suddenly, from where India were looking for a historic win against Oman, now they're staring at a defeat. It was the last 15 minutes that they were always vulnerable at defensively and once again they've dug in haven't they they've dug in they did cause problems that second 45 i mean if you were to choose the hero of the match you would have to turn around and say it has to be almanda two goals in eight minutes you know you've got to say if it was me he'd be my selection for the hero of the match right at the end he's worked hard to be fair he's now switched back to his favorite right side after scoring two goals from the left but all he's done is he's dropped the shoulder, cut back in onto his favoured foot and just rifled that one in the top corner. Stunning finish. So a similar story to that in uh, Bengaluru. And Oman were 2-1 winners the last time these two sides met an Indian World Cup qualifying. Though India are now desperate for an equaliser. And they got one more chance in them, that's the thing. They would have taken a draw at the beginning of this encounter. We're going to end up with that after Almandar's first goal. And now suddenly, to go away with no points in the back from this game, surely that's robbery. And a great first 45-minute performance again from India. Second half, they were under the cost, they were managing it. It's only been the last eight minutes where it's cost them. Yeah, well... As I mentioned, if you were going to choose a hero of the match, it would be Almanda. Two goals in the last eight minutes. Solid, solid performance from him. Couldn't look much further than that. It could have been Gurpreet a little bit earlier on with the saves that he made, but our heroes are the guys that score the goals or they stop them going in the back of the net. That's why, if I had a vote, my hero vote would go to him. was the second and that one he will save her for a long long time some character come from a goal down to score a curler like that super finish and in all this India made a quick substitution as well Sahal Abdul Samad finally makes an appearance a lot of people will probably ask why wasn't he there in the starting 11 a lot of questions that will be left unanswered obviously no, but you wouldn't have said that after the first 45-minute performance, would you, Anand? I mean, the, the way that they played, the way that they performed, everybody did their job exactly spot on. Oh, that's enough, he's blown the whistle. Not enough time to take the free kick. Well, that, for me, is daylight robbery. I do think that India deserves something from this game. They really, really did. But two goals from Almanda in the last eight minutes is what sealed the deal. Yeah, shades of what happened in the Asian Cup as well. Plenty of good football on display from the Blue Tigers, but eventually the character, the superior experience of sides like UAE, Bahrain, and in this case Oman, coming to the fore. No clean sheet for Gurpreet Singh Sandhu once again, despite all his heroics in the first half and most of the second half as well, Mace. But they'll learn again. They'll learn again. India will learn that they've got to see these games out. They've got to see them through. Let's not forget, as we mentioned, pre-season. They haven't had a pre-season. There's still some leggy, leggy players out there. 
which will soon go away once the league starts and they're playing regular matches. So it's not all doom and gloom for India. Let me tell you, it's only that last 10 minutes that's really, really hurt them. I thought they were comfortable in that second half. Yes, old man were coming forwards. Yes, they were creating crosses and causing an issue or two. But they weren't absolutely slaughtering them. And India were well in this game. Well, as it stands then, Sunil Chetri's goal in the first half cancelled out by two strikes from Almanda Rabia in the 82nd and in the 90th minute. And as a result, India, who were looking good for three points up until the 82nd minute, finished with zero. And uh, it's the side from Oman, coached by Irvin Kuman, that uh, win 2 1 from a goal down here in Guwahati. and cheering on the Blue Tigers, of course, still the Blue Pilgrims. It was a fabulous display up until at least the hour mark, if not more, until they started taking more and more waves of pressure from Oman. And eventually, Oman did just enough to find the breakthrough and then enough to get three points as well. And those faces tell a story, of course. It was three points and then one point and now nothing.